Hi, good morning. So I'd like to start with, aren't we also fascinated looking at a gymnast on the dance, on the exercise floor? The trapeze artist swinging from one side to the other, the tightrope walker performing his amazing balancing acts. But little do we realize that all this is controlled by the ear and the brain. The semicircular canals of the ear act as a gyroscope and accelerometer to control angular acceleration and to help you decide which plane the head is moving in. The autolith system of the inner ear is responsible for detection of linear acceleration. So whether you're moving forward or backward, up or down, and also it is the gravity receptor. And that is why astronauts who have to work in zero gravity situations have to undergo special balance training to make sure they are stable in space. One of the other important functions of the ear is to stabilize images during movement. So I'd like all of you to just stretch your arm out and look at your finger, right? And now start moving that finger side to side and try to increase the speed. And you'll see that after a certain speed, the image gets blurred. Now do the same thing with, again, the finger lifted up. And now you move your head side to side. And no matter how fast you do it, you are still able to keep that image steady. That is because of the vestibulo-ocular reflex, that part of the system which enables images to stay steady on the retina. Another test, uh, uh, you can see this actually in animals. The cheetah has a very, very robust vestibulo-ocular reflex. The cheetah coming in at a speed of over 100 kilometers an hour is able to keep the image of the deer stable on the retina so that it can come. Another exercise I'd like you to do, perhaps you can do it at home, take a pencil and keeping your head absolutely steady, just stare at the tip of the pencil. You'll notice that after about 20 seconds, that image will start getting blurred. Even though you are not moving the head, you're not moving the pencil, but still the image gets blurred. That is because of this constant stimulation of the receptors of the retina, they get fatigued and you start getting the blurred image. And that is why we have constant micro movements of the head happening uh, to keep the image very well demonstrated, uh, especially in birds. You'll see as the pigeon walks, how it bobs the head and the neck forward and backward to keep images steady and so that it can assess danger very well. One of the simplest tasks, walking. That is actually one of the most complex tasks that the balance system has to perform on an everyday basis. From how to take the knee ahead, how to lift the foot, tilt the pelvis, maintain the center of gravity, all this requires a lot of computation within the brain to make a single step. And how complicated this was, was actually understood by scientists when they tried to develop the first robots which could walk like humans. So a very, very complex computing process was required for them to keep the body erect, for them to walk on different terrains, to make them able to turn without falling. So if walking is so com complex, just imagine how the body is able to manage these kind of things. All of these great sportsmen, 
it is not just because of physical fitness that they are at the top of their game it is also because their brain is able to track the trajectory of the ball or the shuttlecock so much better than most of us and the brain can then react to make them uh, do the perfect shot so up till now i've been talking about normal physiology what happens in normal conditions but what happens when things go wrong we all enjoy roller coasters when we go to the amusement park but what would happen if you got on to that roller coaster and could not get off what would happen if you were constantly going up and down going spinning round and round or rocking side to side this is the distressing feeling that vertigo patients have for days together and that is what we need to analyze with test and find out what is happening where in the inner ear the vestibular system and its central connections to the brain where is the problem so now i'd like to talk about some of the tests Uh, actually my husband is an engineer so we've teamed together the doctor engineer team and uh, designed some equipment for which we have applied for four patents so i'll just be describing them now many patients with vertigo have a problem in assessing the true vertical if you ask them to hang a picture on the wall they're not able to hang it absolutely straight we test this with the subjective visual vertical test it started out primitively as the bucket test in which the bottom of the bucket was marked with a straight line the patient was asked to put that bucket put their face inside the bucket and make the line straight then further developments in the improved diagnostic systems and now what is available commercially uh, is a laser projection with a straight line projected on the wall and a dynamically moving background the patient is given a psp controller to make the line straight what we discovered was it is not necessary to make things more complicated or more expensive for them to work better so what we have designed is a projection system in which the line is projected and the patient is given a remote clicker in which uh, to make the line straight the angle of the line is then analyzed with the software so it was easy very simple to do and met all the requirements of the test at a fraction of the cost another sophisticated equipment which we have developed is called the video nystagmography we use a 3d printer printed uh, goggles and uh, it has infrared high speed cameras on the side to track the eye movements various ocular tests are performed in which the eyes are tracked the graph is generated and the pathway from the whole through the whole balance system is analyzed up to the brain to find out where the problem lies so this is just a snapshot of the different kinds of reports of the different test we do to analyze each part of the balance system and to assess where the problem lies so that we can correct it we are also using virtual reality in our rehabilitation of the vertigo patients our aim is to establish 100 advanced vertigo and ear clinics across india in the next 2 years and by this we are aiming to treat over a million patients of vertigo in the next 5 years thank you very much